Roads? It's the Ernest Hancock Show. Where we're going, there aren't any roads. It's the same old story, same old song and dance, my friend. It's the same old story, same old story, same old song and dance. Yeah, it just keeps going round and round and round and round and round and round and round, round, round. You know, we're getting out uh, news now that we have... Goldman Sachs misled Congress after duping clients. Senate panel chairman says, duh. You know, yeah. And now what? All this is going to come out sooner. I mean, we've been screaming this for years here. You know, I, I can't even keep track of how many times I've heard, uh, you know, people that we go, look, this guy, oh, no, you conspiracy theory. Oh, no, that's fine. Oh, everything's fine. It's fine. And then later they go, yeah, we know. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. And we should. And we got to fix it. Oh, we got a national light. We got, you know, that, you know, like, it, like we knew it all along. We just, you know, waiting for uh, the opportunity to whatever. And I'm going, if you knew, why were you lying to people? I know a lot of people in the media here, radio, television, print, they're done. You know, this is, you know, that's why I call them the lamestream media, the media so last century. I've been doing that for years because I could see their news is all about credibility. It's about why, why would somebody get news from someone that they know is lying to them? So a lot of the stuff that we put up on Freedom's Phoenix is, is not to advocate what they're saying. It's just show you the BS that they're saying. You look at the graphic and we're like, you know, smells like BS to me, you know, or the perfect cheer or whatever the heck they're going through. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and finish up with Doug Casey's thing here because there's so much good information in here. And I want to make sure, because they're talking, we have the, um, in his 20th year and final year as president of one of the Federal Reserve's 12 regional banks, Tom Honing is going on about, hey, man, you know, low interest rates and more quantitative easing. You know, I, I went out saying I, I knew it was coming. Yep, yep. As he's part of it all this time, <laughs> and they're just they're just trying to get there. You you know, don't put me in the guillotine line parachute kind of thing. Ah, oh, these guys are killing me. All right, well, we left off with entrepreneurism. <clears throat> An entrepreneur is one who takes between. That goes back to the French roots of you buy for a dollar, you sell for two. Okay, and if you can do a whole bunch of that one time, then you know it's all good. Just as a speculator capitalizes on distortions. In the financial markets, an entrepreneur does so in the business world. The more distortions there are in the market, the more bankruptcies and distress sales, the more variation in prosperity and attitudes between countries, the more opportunities there are for the entrepreneur. The years, the years to come are going to be tough on investors and businessmen, but full of opportunity for speculators and entrepreneurs. Keep your passports current, your powder dry, and your eyes open. I suggest you reform your thinking along those lines. Innovation. The two mainsprings of human progress are saving, producing more than you consume and set aside the difference, and new technology, improved ways of doing things. Innovation takes a certain kind of mind and a certain skill set. Not everyone can be an Edison, a Watt, a Wright, or a Ford. But with more scientists and engineers alive today than have ever lived in all previous history put together, you can plan on lots more in the way of innovation. What you want to do is put yourself in front of innovation. Even if you aren't the innovator, you can be a facilitator, something like Steve Ballmer is to Bill Gates. It will give you an excuse to hang out with the younger generation and play amateur venture capitalist. This argues for two things. One, reading very broadly but especially in science, so that you can more easily make the correct decision as to which innovations will be profitable. Two, build enough capital to liberate your time to try something new and perhaps put money into startups. This thinking partly lay in back of our starting our Casey's Extraordinary Technology Service. Now, Casey Research has a lot of different things, and this is what he's talking about. This thinking was kind of what prompted them to start their Casey's Extraordinary Technology Service. It's also, I got to tell you this, it's why we put a lot of science on Freedom's Phoenix. You see from, 
you know, even the, the hacks for military industrial complex like popular science. You have a lot of DARPA stuff. You have uh, Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology uh, review. You have, I mean, a lot of things that we go, we I, I actively go and have editors actively go see what the new technologies are because they're going to change everything. What happened in the graduate? What'd they say to the Dustin Hoffman character? I got one word for you. Plastics. And that was in the 60s. So I'm just, you know, I mean, oh, there's a whole bunch of plastics type things coming. Hoarding. In the days when gold and silver were money, saving was actually identical with hoarding. The only difference was the connotation of the words. Today, you can't even hoard nickel or copper coins anymore because unbeknownst to Bubis Americanus, there's very little of those metals left in either nickels or pennies, both of which will soon disappear from circulation anyway. We previously dismissed a foolish, anachronistic idea of saving with dollars in a bank. So what can you save with other than metals? The answer is useful things, mainly household commodities. I'm not sure exactly how bad the Greater Depression will be or how long it will last, but it makes all the sense in the world to stockpile usable things in lieu of monetary savings. Yep. Got toilet paper, tampons, soap, toothpaste, toothbrushes. Get it? The things I'm talking about could be generally described as consumer perishables. Instead of putting $10,000 extra in the bank, go out and buy things like motor oil, ammunition, light bulbs, toilet paper, cigarettes, liquor, soap, sugar, and dried beans. There are many advantages to this. Taxes. As these things go up in price and you consume them, you won't have any resulting taxes as you would for a successful investment. And you'll beat the VAT, which we'll surely see, the value-added tax. He's thinking, here it comes. Volume savings. When you buy a whole bunch at once, especially when Walmart or Costco has them on sale, you'll greatly reduce your cost. Convenience. You'll have them all now and won't have to waste time getting them later, especially if they're no longer readily available. And if you ask anybody from the Soviet Union, there was always a line. Okay, get that line. Be there are hundreds of items to put on the list and much more to be said about the whole approach. The idea is basically that of my old friend, John Pugsley, which has spoken at, uh, spoken at a Freedom Summit before, which he explained fully in his book, The Alpha Strategy. Take this point very seriously. It's something absolutely everybody can and should do. Agriculture. During the last generation, mothers wanted their kids to grow up to be investment bankers. That thought will be totally banished soon and for a long time. I suspect farmers and ranchers will become the next paradigm of success after being viewed as backward hayseeds for, gen hayseeds for generations. Agriculture isn't an easy business. It has plenty of risk, but there always, there's always going to be a demand for its products, and I suspect the margins are going to stay high for a long time to come. Why? There's still plenty of potential farmland around the world that's wild or fallow but politics is likely to keep it that way. Population won't be growing that much and will be falling in the developed world, but people will be wealthier and want to eat better. So you want to be, you want the kind of food that people with money eat. I'm not crazy about commodity type foods like wheat, soy, and corn. They are high volume industrial style foods subject to political interference. And they're not important as foods for wealthy people, which is the profitable part of the market. Besides, grains are where everybody's attention is directed. But there are other reasons why I'm not wild about owning any amber waves of grain. Anything you want to plant will practically require the use of a genetically modified seed from Monsanto. I'm not sure I really care if it's GM, but uh, all foods have been genetically modified over the millennia just by virtue of cultivation. And one dollar paid to Monsanto typically not only yields the farmer five dollars of extra return, but produces lots of extra food, which helps everybody. But I wouldn't be surprised if someday the giant monocultures of plants, all with totally identical purchased seeds, don't result in some kind of catastrophic crop failure. This is a subject for another time, but it's a thought to keep in mind. It goes on, but Basically, that's it. You know, it's it's uh, it, 
stay in the special foods that, you know, are going to be, you know, kind of elite foods. You know, things that are for your health. Herbs that, you know, will make you feel better. Uh, you know, high nutrition foods. Heck, I'm, I'm big on carrots. I'm, I, I, I see this coming, you know, and so does Doug and a lot of other people. You've been warned. Have you, have you got the, your, your toiletries? Do you stock up on beans? Are you able to just survive what's coming? Then you have the black swans. All of a sudden, something crazy happens like in Japan. Earthquakes, tsunamis, and nuclear radiation. When we come back, our next guest is going to help us understand where they're really at. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lame stream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured. Toured. 